Welcome to Ocean Chicks Films. Hey guys, welcome to Ocean Chicks Films. I'm your host, Karen, and tonight we're doing part two of our Hellraiser two-for-one movie review series. And this one's a viewer request from Kevin Dobson. He wanted me to review Hellraiser 5, Inferno. And I know a lot of you guys wanted me to look at that one. And uh, I did too. I really liked it. But the first time I watched it, I didn't really like it that much. Um, but I think it was largely because I'd watched a bunch of Hellraisers and then I followed it with that one and I was kind of a little bit ODing on Hellraiser. And so I took a break couple weeks later watched it again and then a third time actually last night and I actually it's a really really good film so before we get into this one let's have a look at what it's all about Hellraiser 5 Inferno from 2000 Los Angeles cop Joseph finds himself plunged into hell forcing him to work with the demon known as Pinhead to gain possession of his puzzle box and escape from an eternity of suffering Directed by Scott Derrickson, starring Craig Sheffer, Nick Turturro, and Doug Bradley. So this film is the fifth installment in the Hellraiser franchise. Now, last week we talked about Hellraiser 4, Bloodline, which takes us into space, right? It was supposed to be the grand finale of the whole series, um, but they kept going, <laughs> of course. And uh, Scott Derrickson's directing this one, and you know he's my favorite. Um, he uh, was criticized for it not being a true Hellraiser movie. It should have been called something else. But I have to disagree. I think Scott tends to take movies to another level. You know, he works on the meanings behind things and you questioning what's actually happening and what's going on on a deeper spiritual level. And so I think that's what they've done here. And um, I, I think it enhances the whole story, the whole thing. Um, and I think it's quite brilliant, actually. We really get to know the feelings that the characters are having and the moral dilemmas that they're going through. And I think that's just brilliant. I think that that really makes you think and it makes you want to watch it a bunch of times. And I know there are a lot of you out there that really liked this movie, um, even though, you know, it did, did okay. It went straight to video. So, I mean, that, that right there is going to bring those numbers down. But um, I think it was a really good film. And another thing to note is that Scott Derrickson, this was his first feature length directorial debut. Straight up front, this review is going to have some spoilers. So if that's not cool, just click off now and we'll catch you on the next one. Or go watch it and come back and then we can talk about it. And you can watch everything. But I don't want to ruin it for you because I'm going to get into some details about the film. So this one has a story that centers around this uh, detective, Joseph Thorpe, who's played by Craig Sheffer, who um, I remember seeing the first time in the movie Fire with Fire with Virginia Madsen. Loved that movie so much. Pretty sure I saw that in my teens. Pretty sure. Um, but yeah, I love that movie so much. I, I really followed him a lot after that. And um, he plays this dirty cop in this movie. And um, at a crime scene, he finds the puzzle box and he of course plays with it and he opens up the gates of hell. So in that way, it's similar to Hellraiser. They take it a little bit in a different direction though with uh, the whole detective storyline, uh, but, but still very much a Hellraiser movie. Um, we've got Doug Bradley returning as Pinhead, you know, so that's really awesome. So like I said, the detective Joseph, he's a dirty cop and he's a dirty guy all around actually. Um, he's married and ha they have a beautiful little girl together and he, you know, he's out cheating on her and staying out all night and doing all kinds of stuff he shouldn't be doing. He's even kind of trashy to his co-worker as well. Anyway, that gets him into a lot of trouble. And at work, uh, they start discovering all of these murders that are happening around town. And um, what's similar in all of them is that they're finding this severed child's finger placed strategically in each crime scene and because he played with the puzzle box these weird kinds of things start to happen and you can tell that 
you know, Pinhead is right around the corner that there's something going on there. But he thinks he's going crazy. So the way that Scott Derrickson portrays um, Joseph thinking he's losing his mind is by having all of these dream sequences where the lighting he's used is this yellow, almost lime green lighting, which really made me think of a dream. Like it's just like so believable the way that he portrayed it. I really like that part. Um, it's well done. So Joseph's struggling with this thinking he's going crazy because he's seeing these weird images of Cenobites and things um, and flashing back to his childhood and, and everything's getting all garbled together um, as well as dealing with all of these horrific, crazy murder, murders that he can't figure out. Um, so he ends up in a therapist's office to discuss his problems, to get through it. So through the investigation, he comes to learn that there's this dude called the engineer this mysterious dude that he thinks is causing all of these murders that's committing the murders. And he ends up eventually going like to all the different people in town, all the criminals, anybody he can find to try to question and see who this guy is. And everybody's really, they know him, but they really are reluctant to talk about him because they're scared of him. And so eventually he figures out the engineer is his therapist who's been really supportive of the whole pinhead story in the puzzle box which is really weird and in turn that means he is pinhead i really like how they did that um it kicks it up to another level because they're taking pinhead um as this intelligent demon that is taking this detective who stumbled onto things and manipulating him in a way that he's ch on the chase, on the hunt for this engineer uh, person as a criminal um, and luring him and connecting him to Pinhead. You know, like, it, I think that was just brilliant. I mean, he's not just, you open the puzzle box, Pinhead shows up and then drags you to hell and end of story, done. You know, there's a couple of gross kills or whatever and that's it. I loved that. Um, and I'm going to flip a little bit around here because I've got some thoughts on different areas and it's going to be kind of out of context, but I just want to talk about all the different parts of it. Um, and you guys get how that is. I'm sure you think that way when you watch a movie too. Um, so yeah, the Cenobites. So there's these, I don't know, they're like these weird sex twins or something that um, connect with him in a dream state, Joseph. And um, he thinks he's dreaming, but they're so gross. They have these really long tongues and um, they're reaching into his chest with their hands and like going right into the skin and the chest and there's blood being smeared all over. Really weird. Um, really, really well done. Really good graphic. One of the best ones of all of the Cenobites I think I've ever seen. Of course, there's a chatterer, a little bit of the chatterer too, so that's cool. We have this deeper message within the story here. It's that the engineer is almost like he's Pinhead. He's like the gatekeeper to hell. And he's showing Joseph to face his innocent childhood um, as compared to his very bad adulthood, um, making him face that before he's dragged to hell. I, I love that. I think that was really a neat kick things up a little bit, you know? Um, I really enjoy that for this story. I don't think it's different than a regular Hellraiser movie. I just think it, it takes it to another level. It's showing him how bad he's become in life, how many sins he's committed, how horrible of a human being he is, and that this is condemning him to uh, hell, you know, with this ugliness um, and pain and torture and disfigurement and all of that um, because of his actions, that that's how ugly um, what he's been doing is. It just, my mind just goes to all different directions and I just, I love that about this story. The music in this is pretty good too. And um, we have Joseph narrating parts of the story, like a voiceover, um, kind of like filling us in on things, um, his thoughts and feelings. And um, it totally reminded me of Kolchak's The Night Stalker, which you know I love very much. So Craig Sheffer was excellent in this role. Um, the beginning part, he was super overacting um, to show that, you know, he's this arrogant shithead of a human being. And as we go through, he starts to break down. His character starts to become unhinged. And 
I felt his pain and turmoil. Like he was just so great at it. I was really engulfed in the story and really invested in that character. Very well done. And I loved the story. I think it's sort of a statement on the difference between good and evil, pleasure and pain, um, human and the supernatural. I, I loved that about it. And the end scene with the reveal of the hell world when Penhead comes to take Joseph to hell. Incredible. Um, it's like a dream sequence and he's rushing to try to frantically get to his wife and kid because he suddenly, you know, has to protect them and rescue them and um they've been sort of frozen to death by the temperatures being really cold and their bodies are kind of like almost freeze-dried and like you know break apart and then the world cracks open and you know the whole thing happens and ah very well done and then we have the classic hooks into his face ripping his face so cool so so very cool and the pain that he's in he's so good at that part like just so great at expressing the the pain and everything i i loved it so I think this film is very sophisticated. Um, it's got a whole bunch of levels and layers, and that's what I love about Scott Derrickson movies. Um, they have that. There's a lot of stuff to think about. There's a lot of stuff to sink your teeth into. Um, I think that's why Sinister works so well, too. I'm gonna be reviewing that one soon, also. Um, I've had that on my list for a while. I think that was an incredible film as well. Another thing I forgot to mention was the camera angles. Um, it's been likened to a film noir movie and I get that. I totally get that and I have to agree. It really sets the mood of the film and it, that is really special. I want to watch it again just for that because visually, you know me, I'm picking up on things all the time. Um, I really like that about this movie. Another thing I loved about this movie um, from the human point of view is uh, Joseph is going through it seems to me like his childhood was maybe not as good as he's saying it was and he's sort of dead inside so he's doing things to the extreme all the time um, really risking you know playing with fire and he shows very much that he's dead inside and so he's not feeling anything and I think that's how he's able to go from these extremes and not just settle for the the normal but he knows somewhere inside he's got a be normal or portray this normal image of himself and hide all this other stuff and wow that right there you could dissect that forever um really 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 neat level to the story so one little fun fact about the film uh on the third watch i noticed this but i missed it the first two times i watched it so joseph goes to this body piercing shop to question the owner um because he's trying to hunt down the engineer right and the name of the business is stigmata and i was like whoa what are the odds of that considering i'm doing the watch party for stigmata on saturday night how crazy and one last thing, the last line that Pinhead says is, welcome to hell before Joseph's dragged into hell. So I thought that was pretty cool. I liked that. Um, so I think that's everything I wanted to talk about with this one. Um, thanks again, Kevin, for recommending I watch this because yeah, this was a good one to review. Really good. Cannot wait to hear everybody's thoughts on this one, whether you liked it or hated it or different, different things that maybe I missed even. Um, yeah, so for my review, I'm gonna give this one four shark bites out of five because it's a good watch. I really, really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys liked this. Super nice reviewing these films for you. If you have any more that you want me to watch, keep throwing them my way because I'll, I'll watch them and review them and shout you out. I certainly will. And you guys know the drill. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up because it helps me out a lot and subscribe to the channel for more movie reviews like this, viewer requests, the watch parties. Um, I'm going to be firing up a podcast soon. All that fun stuff because I love, love, love hanging out with you guys and chatting with you about these movies. Super fun. Well, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and we will see you again very soon on the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>